Welcome to Seattle Sports Union. My name is Abraham Deweese, and we are the best in local Seattle sports uh, commentary and social media. I'm with, uh, boy, this has started off really bad right now. I should just read the script. Hi, I'm Seattle. <laughs> I'm Abraham Deweese with Seattle Sports Union. With me is Rob English. He is our NFL analyst, and we are the best in local Seattle sports commentary. Uh, we have all these great articles on SeattleSportsUnion.com. He is our NFL analyst, and Oh, I'm getting feedback. <laughs> Check us out on our Facebook page at seattlesportsunion.com. Check us out on Twitter at Seattle Sports U. Rob, the Seattle Seahawks won today. I'm excited. Are you? Uh, yeah. You know, it, it took a while to get going. Um, I was... I was waiting and waiting and waiting for us to turn the corner in this game. Unfortunately, it took until, you know, the third quarter for it to actually happen, which I guess I should have expected. Um, but, uh, you know, when we actually started playing well, we played fairly well. I had a lot of bones to pick about, a lot of things still. But um, but uh, that, that all being said, um, it, it was an exciting game. Um, I, I walked away from it uh, feeling pretty good. What was your initial reaction when that clock hit? Zero, 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 zero. I mean, for myself, I, I, I was thinking, we pounded these guys. We just utterly obliterated them. But then I had to go back in my memory and think, wait a minute, that only happened in the second half. Uh, so my initial reaction was joy and elation. Uh, but as my critical mind kind of got down to it, it's, you know, it, it came to, it became a matter of, we dominated for one half and just kind of goofed around for the first half. Well, so I, uh, I wish I wish I wish goofing around was was a was a way I could I could uh, uh, <laughs> appreciate uh, I describing saw, it. Cause... I saw your Facebook post. <laughs> yes, there were goofing was not the word you chose. It, I mean, it, when, it was when it, it was good. Go, it, it was it was complete and total. Just I mean it. Gosh, I struggled to even find a really good descriptive word to you know to describe what it was, but it was just terrible. We just, I mean, it was one step forward and three steps back the whole first half. Um, I mean, we were dominant. As you said, the, the actual the domination was the entire game if you look at it statistically with in, in every stat except for points. Uh, we, I, I think that uh, New York had somewhere around forty something high, low fifties or high forties in in total yards um, at or near the end of the first half. Um, and to our hundred and some odd, I mean, we doubled them up and then some, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I mean, we had time of possession dominated, total yards dominated. Um, it, it, yet we were down. It was, it was unbelievable how every single time we had one good thing, three bad things happened right afterward. Um, you know, so if that game had just been cleaner, it was sloppy is what it was. If that game had just been cleaner, I think we would have, I mean, we might have put up 40, 40 points on them. So, um, that, that part is, that's the part that makes me uneasy about the whole thing. Well, yeah, I, uh, what do we score 26? And uh, I think you're right. I think had we pounded the ball in on that fourth down play. Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, you add another seven points there. Uh, There's also another time where Jimmy Graham couldn't catch the ball. Uh, that's another seven points. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you had them all up. Or actually, that was the same one, wasn't it? Uh, but there was another time where we didn't catch in the end zone. I don't know. It, it, I agree with you. There's, a, there's about 14 points. Uh, maximum that we left on the table there's about uh, at least six points that we left you know that we left on the table minimum um there were no there there were no challenge to us the giants were no challenge they got a lucky break off of a thomas rawls fumble and uh landon collins ran that back obviously uh and then they punched it in they punched or actually they threw it in threw it in but i that was a lucky bounce that was a lucky a lucky play, and I don't know. I, I felt like we were the dominant team. What I don't like, Rob, what I don't like is that we fiddled around yet again. One more one more week of letting another team hang in there. Um, a good team like Tennessee will stick it to us. A terrible team like the Giants won't. So uh, hopefully they can clean that up. Uh, one other thing I liked, Rob, was the comparison of quarterbacks. Uh, when you take a look at Russell Wilson, he went uh, 27 for 39 versus Eli Manning in that god-awful game that he had. Um, not necessarily that he's a bad quarterback. I know a lot of people get down on Eli Manning. Uh, he doesn't have much to work with. But I, but I, I had an appreciation today that 
we have one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL. That's that's something that I gathered from this particular game as well. Well, there, certainly, yeah. Um, I mean, it's only only someone who what I would call a hater would say would you would try to assert that Russell Wilson isn't a top tier quarterback in this league. Does he do it the same way as your Brady's and your Rodgers? Maybe not so much. He does it in a different, slightly different fashion. But I mean, the, the proof is in the pudding. Look at the numbers. I mean, the, the, the guy can throw the ball where it needs to go. He's got the yards. He's got the touchdowns. Um, his percentage is high. I mean, he's got all if you, just just based on numbers alone. He's got a Super Bowl ring. You know, people hang their hats on the on the whole Super Bowl thing. So, um, you know, just just looking at the, the 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 things that come in black and white, you simply can't argue it because those there are people out there who say just look at the numbers. So look at the numbers. He's an elite quarterback. Let's take let's go back to that first quarter. That first quarter we had a nine minute drive, and uh, got down to the one. Could not punch it into the end zone. I mean, we had drop passes. We had uh, runs that were stuffed. Can you, can you take us back, Rob, and tell us what your thoughts were? I mean, you know, first, were you a fan of going for it? Were you a fan of the play selection? Uh, or was there just incompetence within certain uh, personnel that you needed to see more from? <laughs> Now we we have oftentimes gone into the whole Daryl Bevel and the play calling thing. We we we've we've gone into all that, but I'm going to skip all over all of that and say this: if you let forget the the fact that the play the the drive was what nine nine and some odd minutes, if you get the ball inside the five yard line and you have how many five tries was it four or five tries inside the five yard line? Uh, they have a new set of down. It was at least five. It was at least five, yeah. Five tries. For, to me, it might as well have been 105. You get that many tries inside the five-yard line, and you don't get into the end zone. I'm, I'm almost to the point where I say you don't even deserve to win. It's, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. I mean, run the ball, pass the ball, figure out how to get the ball in the end zone. Jimmy Graham, I'm sure we're going to get into him later because i got plenty to say about that. But um, – you get the ball inside the five yard line and inside the two yard line, that many attempts and you don't get in the end zone. There's a problem. There's a problem. I yeah. said earlier when I was posting, how long do you, how many times do you have to try to run power and get it smashed right back in your face before you realize you don't have a power run. It's just, it's not there. Do something else, but get the ball in the end zone. Just get the ball into the end zone. Yeah. I don't know what the problem is. I was, I was listening to, listening to this on the radio and I kept thinking to myself, why are you running a shotgun inside the five? That does not make a lot of sense. Uh, why do you run a flare pass inside the five? It, these are all, these are all spread techniques, right? you the concept of this shotgun, two things. It gives the quarterback more time to see the pass rush. Uh, guess what? Inside the five, there's not going to be much of a pass rush. They're expecting a run. So, I don't get that. Um, two, <laughs> the shotgun uh, doesn't allow for a, a, a fullback. Um, and uh, not that we have a good fullback. I don't like Trey Madden or whatever his name is. Um, but, I mean, it doesn't allow for an extra blocker in the backfield. And we know that Jimmy Graham can't block. And uh, uh, I may have been wrong, and I'm going to apologize to Matt Page out there. I may be wrong about Nick Vanette. Yeah, I don't see much out of this guy either at tight end. Um, so without the tight ends that can block, without uh, fullback, uh, maybe you're forced to do a shotgun formation, but it's not optimal for that for that area of the field. Um, flare pass makes no sense to me. You're you're throwing it five yards this way. Why don't you throw it five yards that way? We might score a touchdown. You know, um, it's similar to the old wishbone offense or the old option. You know, triple option offense. Uh, it makes no sense to run laterally when you need to go forward. Now, that said, Rob, I, I could feel the hate just oozing from you on social media today when they tried to run that power on uh, fourth and goal. And that didn't make any sense at all because <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do on first or second down. Right? <laughs> and yeah, it seemed way out of, it seemed very out of order. And I don't know if that was a Pete Carroll call or a Daryl Bevel call. I'm going to blame Bevel. Because whenever something goes wrong, I always blame Bevel. That was not a 
particularly great play call. The entire thing was botched. Um, then again, you can't you can't let people off the hook that don't make the plays. Offensive line, True. you got to push people one yard so you can get that touchdown. I agree. I, I totally agree. Um, you know, it's just at that point, it's a culmination of everything that just went, you know, totally, totally wrong. You know, I, I agree. The, the, the flair was was just silly. Um, you know, I, and I think I get if I remember the play is deep and as you know, detailed as I as I think I did. I, I, I think the one of the receivers on the left side ran, had run like a, a in, an inside slant or, or an in. So I think the, if they were having some sort of zone scheme, then it would have drawn that guy who ended up making the tackle in a little bit, so he wouldn't be able to catch the, re the running back before he got to the end zone, but it didn't work, obviously. Um, you know, so I, you just, they should have, in my opinion, you probably, you either go, go in, uh, run a, a play action and Russell Wilson run it, or you throw, you throw, the, you throw the corner, uh, the fade again to Jimmy Graham, and hopefully his hands work. Uh, you know, I mean, good, you, you, you throw know what? That's, that's really good. I'm going to interrupt you right there. Uh, the bootleg, by the way, I don't know why this team never runs it. I, devil, what are you doing? Run the bootleg right. every once in a while. The fade, I saw a comment on your page that, I don't know if it was sarcastic or whatnot, but you said that Russell Wilson can't throw the fade. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to counter your argument. I, I, I was, because I really love to go to your page and just like shoot you down. Uh, but I'm like, huh, I, no, that is what we should be doing. We should be throwing to, to Jimmy Grant on a fade. I mean, six, seven, six, seven tight end versus a six foot cornerback. Yeah. That's not even do. six foot. Yeah. So I, 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 I don't think the too short thing flies with me. I don't think there's a physics part of that that works because Russell Wilson has an incredibly high angle of uh, articulation for his pass. But maybe, maybe that's not a skill that he's particularly good at. I don't, well, I, it was it, it was it was totally it was totally like hypothesis, right? Yeah. You know, it was. I'm thinking, okay, because Russell Wilson. If we look back historically, by my own by my own recollection, the fade route doesn't do too well out of Russell Wilson's hand. It, it we're not very we're not very uh, um you know proficient on the fade route, so regardless of who you're throwing it to. Um, and a lot of times I seem to remember it being that the, the the throw not really being where it needed to be for the receiver to have a legitimate chance at it. Um. The first one that we ran, I believe it was on the left side uh, to Jimmy, um, it was too high. It was too far. Now, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a point when you – there's a, there's a, a, um, a factor in, in throwing the fade where you, the ball has to be in the air before the receiver is even turning to look for it. So there's a, there's a little bit of a, um, anticipation there. And and I got when I what I said earlier was him being too short, you know, to throw. I'm thinking, okay, well, he's a short guy. When that ball has to kind of go to that and that upward angle, maybe he's kind of overshooting it in his – you know, in his uh, in his um, anticipation of where Jimmy Graham's supposed to be, um, you know, I'm thinking it, it's got to be something because he doesn't throw the fade well, the fade route very well. Yeah, I'm not. Um, gonna, I'm not going. I'm not going to go with the short thing because obviously uh, Drew Brees can do that exact same play. Drew Brees, but I'm. Yeah, Drew, but I'm very, I'm very much in your camp. There's something there. I mean, we don't. I don't have the stats in front of me, but empirical evidence, what I've seen with my own two eyes. You're right. I, I don't see us doing that. And that is a tool at the goal line that most quarterbacks have in their back pocket. Right. Most good quarterbacks, you know. Um, right. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, now, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can find the stats on that and maybe present it next week. Because I, I, I don't know if this is just us in our recent memory wondering where the hell this pass has been. Or, if, you know, uh, maybe he's just not capable or... Maybe this offense doesn't like to call that play. That's another Daryl Bevel dig. Daryl Bevel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got a question for you about CJ Proces. He got injured on the very first play of the game after coming off that uh, injured list. Um, where are we with this guy? What are we doing with this guy? I, I don't. Well, uh, based on him being injured today, um, it seems like, I mean, it, the, the writing's on the wall. He, the guy can't stay healthy. Um, if you can't stay healthy, it doesn't matter really how high your upside is, right? If you can't be on the field for us to use it, for us to utilize it, then what's the point? Um, I mean, the first play of the game, 
right? Was it the first play of the game? Because yeah, it was actually you actually told me. Yeah, it was um, the first. Play, it was the first play that he played on. Yeah, uh, he played on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah um, I mean, if, if you can't stay healthy, then you can't play ball. Like, I mean, that, that's really what it is. I mean, when the ball has been, we, we've seen that pro size has the ability to to make big plays. Um, but we've only seen it really what once or twice, maybe three times because he's been injured the, yeah, <laughs> every other I mean, you know every other moment. He can make big um, plays. I mean, you look at his career stats in six games. Ugh, that's over two seasons. In six games, uh, thirty-two rushes, one hundred and seventy-two yards, additional two hundred yards receiving. The guy is capable yeah. of of balling. But I don't ever see him on the field, and uh, I don't know. Do you have to cut ties at the end of this year? Well, you know, it's always it has always been one of those things where uh, you know you say you don't lose your job to injury, or you can't lose your job to injury. It's more, it's usually more of a conversation about especially quarterbacks, you know, who, who get, have been hurt and then someone comes in and plays, seems, seems to play better and then does the starter get their job back when they come back. Um, but, but even this situation, you know, um, should he lose his job due to injury? Uh, there, I think it gets to a point where the answer has to be yes, uh, you know, because he, he's really been he, – he, we're not getting our money's worth out of C.J. Procise right now. He, yeah. he, you know, he's in a rookie contract, I believe, but, you know um, – But still, it, it's, it's a roster still spot. Not, you- yeah, it's a roster spot. You know, we could put someone else there, you know, ha- add some depth somewhere else, you know, um, or, or just a, dip- a running back that can stay healthy, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, there's I would hate to see him go somewhere else and then all of a sudden, for, you know, re- realize that he can do something different, stay healthy and do put up big numbers for someone else. Um, but, yeah, we got to have people who can who can uh, who can contribute on the roster. Uh, losing your job, the injury. Uh, do you know who Wally Pip is? Who's that? Do you know who Wally Pip? is wally pip wally pip not ringing a bell good you don't need to know who he is but i'll tell you (laughs) who he is uh i'm sorry you don't have to feel bad that you don't know who he is he is the he is the new york yankee uh first baseman back in the 20s back in the 20s and he had a very good batting average uh knocked in a lot of runs played solid defense got injured a man by the name of luke gehrig (laughs) sub for him and then Lou Gehrig set the record for most games without, uh, you know, most games consecutively pay, played, you know, World Series rings for each one of his fingers and uh, a couple of MVPs. Uh, so, yes, you do lose your <laughs> you do lose your job due to injury. Job injury, right. Uh, Drew Bledsoe for the Patriots lost his right. job to? Tom, terrific. Yep, there we go. <laughs> uh, so, yes, you do lose your job to injuries. CJ Procise. I'm. I see the potential, but uh, there, there's it's it's a roster spot, and you need those. And um, I would personally like to see Tyler Lockett uh, play just receiver, and someone else return all these kicks. And that would be the kind of person I'd like to see. Uh, that's what CJ Procise was supposed to do. He was supposed to be a punt returner, um, right. kick returner, whatever. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm done with him. I. Uh, feel bad for him because you know you don't get to control how healthy your body is. I mean, well, I'm in the respect of a uh, physical game like football. I mean, sometimes some people have weaker knees than others. You know, some uh, uh, his case an ankle. Uh, so right. uh, I feel bad for him, but like, uh, gosh, we got to move forward from this guy. Speaking of moving forward, uh, there's no Cliff Averill this year. Cliff Averill got injured last week. Um, what have you thought about the people who have replaced him or we are looking to to replace him? I'm talking about your uh, young guys like Nas Jones, Jaron Reed, and I'm talking about your veterans like Frank Clark and Shelton Richardson. Um, are we okay, are, are we going to be okay without him? I need a I need I need to get your temperature on this. Are we going to be okay? I mean, do we just throw away the the whole football season and the and the Super Bowl because he's not here? Well, uh, uh, Cliff Avril not being there is certainly um, it, it, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. It, it's it's a, a, he's a major cog to the you know to the to the whole machine there. Um, I believe that this is a, a situation that we can work ourselves through. Um, him not being there, I think personally, despite him being the best man for the job, he's the better of the you know of these of the men who who potentially be replacing him. Um, 
but I think really what we lose there more is just depth, um, the ability to run that rotation um, that we that we have that made you know more um, that made common in the last few years, where the defensive line has has a decent rotation, so everybody's always fresh coming off uh, coming off the, off the, off the sideline. Um, so we get a good pass rush because we're not big on the defensive line. So being being fresh and be able to be fast is really what we've you know um, been able to make a, our you know make our bank on. Um, so you him like, not being like there the, takes away like the an element of that. Say again. You, so you like the backups? I do. I do. I think. Uh, I think um, especially Jaron Reed. I think Jaron Reed's playing well. Um, Nas Jones, like he's made a couple of plays. Haven't really been able to really you know study him as much. Um, but I, I, I think the, you know, as far as what well, we guys played two games now without him, um, and he, we've stopped the run. Um, we're getting decent pressure on the quarterbacks. Um, uh, I think, I think we're doing okay, at least for, as of right now. Now, if that changes in the future, then, you know, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get to it. But as of right now, I believe that Nas Jones and, uh, Jaren Reed are, are, are doing a bang up job in his, in his absence. You are such a Cliff Averill hack. I know you've. I've known you for a couple of years now, and I know he's one of your favorites. Uh, that defensive end spot, I personally think, is capably manned by Frank Clark. But I do get what you're saying. In the past, uh, when Cliff Averill's on the team, everybody's playing a, a fewer than 50% of the snaps. There's not one of the – when the Seahawks are the best, there's not one defensive lineman that's playing half the snaps. Right. Because they're shuttling in and out and in and out and in and out. And uh, then you're getting 100% from a guy that his energy level is at 100%. And, uh, you know, each one of these players that Pete Carroll brings in, their mentality is always go 100%. And that, that's been the success of the Seahawks. But I get what you're saying. If you take out Averill, well, now you got to put in Frank Clark a lot more. He has to contribute a lot more for each snap uh, that's additional. Uh, that he additionally gets, um, and the weakening, the weakening is, the weakening of that position is bad. But Robert, he's thirty-one. This was going to happen at some point, right? For sure, for sure. Uh, I mean, he, he, you have to assume that we might get what one. I'm not sure what his contract looks like right now, but you might assume you only get one, maybe two more years out of him before he's either he's gone for one reason or another. Um, but you know. That still doesn't change the reality of that when he's there, he's the best. He's the best one, uh, you know, at the job. Um, I love Frank Clark right now. Frank Clark is playing great ball. Um, he's coming off the edge fast. Uh, he looks really good to me, and um, I think that if he, you know, has the opportunity, he made a mistake earlier today. I'm trying to remember what it was, uh, but he did something that I didn't, I didn't appreciate. Um, oh, he, he, got he, a little, he got a little chippy with somebody. Yeah. Did he get chippy with somebody? Is that what it was? Yeah. He got a little chippy um, with somebody, and he's easily provoked. Right. So. Yeah, I well, so was uh, who was the other guy on offense? Was it Glowinski on the offensive line? Oh, messed yeah. up too. Uh, that was bad. Too. So yeah, but uh, anyway, yeah. Um, I, I think we have uh, hope. There's hope in the future at the at the position. Um, so um, I'm not really too worried about Avril being gone in that respect. Um, it just sucks that he's not there right now because of the our philosophy at the position. What I really like was last year's uh, second pick. Uh, sorry, second round pick, first pick overall, Jaron Reed. Uh, out of the University of Alabama. He has 19 tackles and a fumble for a loss and a couple of tackles for losses as well. Um, he doesn't play defensive end like Avril does, obviously. Now you got me saying Avril. I thought it was Avril. Is it Avril, 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 potato, potato. I guess it's Avril Levine, so maybe it's Robert Avril. I don't know. I, uh, Cliff Avril. <laughs> Robert, right? Robert Avril? Cliff, whoever. Now, now we're all messed up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so what I was – what I was going to say, though, is Jaron Reed has 19 tackles. That's the most for any defensive lineman on this team. A uh, couple for losses and a tackle for a fumble that we recovered at the end of this game today. Uh, I'm liking how he's coming along. He was he came out of the Alabama, uh, the University of Alabama, as a run stuffer, and he was uh, projected to always be taken out on pass rushes. Have you noticed that he's been left in? for uh, past situations lately? No, I can't say that I have. Okay, because um, that's really cool. Yeah. I, he might be, like, expanding his game and, you know, moving it out. Uh, and I, I, as much as we get down as on the Seahawks that we do, I mean, uh, we like to think this is the end, and I, I'm potentially the number one cause of, uh, instigator of uh, doom, doomsaying or naysaying 
that this is the end of the Legion of Boom, but uh, I looked at the stats today. We are eighth in total defense and first in uh, scoring defense. We've only allowed 15.7 points per game. That's number one in the NFL. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and just, just a quick point uh, about Jaron Reed. You know, mentioned him being in on passing plays. I believe it was uh, Reed that caused um, the, the pressure on, um, on Goff two weeks ago, which uh, led to uh, Earl Thomas's interception in the middle of the That's field. I think right. he, he got the pressure on him. So, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, the Legion of Boom is alive and well. Let's not let's not make any let's not have any mistakes about that. Anyone tries to tell you different, you should you know tell them to take a long walk off a short something. You know, <laughs> um, the Legion of Boom is not exactly the what you know the way it was before, but it's still there, as you said, leading the league, um, and it's it's going to be that way because that's really what we're. I mean, look, just look at it. The games that we've won, the games that we've played in, um, if the defense wasn't what it is. Would we even be? Would we be? Would we be even having this conversation right now? No, not at all. Chances I mean, are not probably not. Two. We would not be four and two with a lesser defense. You know? We would not be four and two with a lesser defense. So uh, I, I don't know that we beat. I don't know that we beat uh, the Giants today. I don't know that we beat the Colts a few weeks ago. Really, uh, certainly not the Rams. Right. Um, you know, it's uh, it's. Our defense is the Seahawks. The Seahawks is defense. Yeah. You know, so I wish the um, offense would show up and take some pressure off the defense, but uh, as we'll, do we'll I. See. or at least maybe a little bit sooner in the a game. Sooner in the game, you know, <laughs> we'll see how that works out. Uh, all right, my favorite topic and yours. Uh, I'm sure Matt Page is out there just uh, about to feel a uh, feel a lot of pain when I bring up this name. Jimmy Graham. Three catches, 51 yards, and a touchdown. He is obviously your player of the week, right, Rob? Jimmy Graham is my player of the week to hit with a baseball bat <laughs> or a racket ball racket or something. Um, <laughs> look, three catches, 51 yards, two TDs. Great. Great. One I mean, team. I guess one. Can, team. One team. Oh, was it was it one? Did he get one or did he, did he have second? Oh, yeah, one. Yeah, that the one he had on the on the fade finally, right on the fade, um, which if you want to call it a fade, but um, <laughs> uh, but Jimmy Graham has to do so much more for me to erase all his boo boos, if you ask me. He has, it, it, I mean, the ball that he dropped when he was all by himself on the left side of, left side of the formation. I mean, I don't, I don't believe even after the ball was dropped and after the camera panned away as the play ended and he turns over with his head hanging to walk back to I don't believe I even saw a, a Giants jersey anywhere near him, like, the whole time. Like, he might have just been able to run to the end zone. Who knows? <laughs> there was right. nobody around him. Um, and he just dropped the ball. Uh, the, 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 you know, the quote-unquote fade route, the first one, um, uh, the second one, I should say, that, that hit him right in his gut. Granted, um, he might have been expecting it. I, th I think the, um, the, the TV announcer was giving Jimmy a little bit of a pass because he, a big guy like him might expect a fade route to come out a little higher. But I would say baloney. It hit him right in his stomach, right in his big, useless stomach. He should have <laughs> caught the ball. <laughs> like, there's just no excuse. I, there's just no excuse. If you get, uh, you know, I go back to uh, Richard Michelson. Uh, he's uh, part of our group here at Seattle Sports Union. He... Uh, Writes a lot of great articles on our site. Uh, he he always says, uh, "You get two hands on it, zero empathy if you drop it. Zero, two hands, it's caught. It's the NFL. You're getting paid millions, and That's the quarterback the puts it in your two hands. You can't catch it. Um, my his words, not mine. You're worthless, is what what he says. I don't know though. Hey. I mean, I, I I think about this though, Rob. Uh, those two those two things aside. Are we? Shouldn't we be happy that Devil has found uses for him finally? I mean, uh, I don't know if you noticed uh, in that game against the uh, uh, game against the Rams, he was split out. He's no longer a tight end on this team. They gave up. He's he's now a wide receiver. He he's been playing over eighty percent split out for the last two games, and. Uh, uh, I, I think they're recognizing that he's just a slow, tall wide receiver rather than a uh, uh, tight end. And, and I, I'm I'm glad they're making that transition. And 51 yards, 
maybe that's the new normal for Jimmy. Maybe that's what he is. Well, I don't think that the yardage really means much um, because, again, we are not that we're not the New Orleans Saints. OK, so so we're not going to, um, you know, we don't throw the ball a whole lot anyway. We we're kind of seems like we're kind of transitioning to that currently. But um, typically speaking, the Seahawks aren't that kind of team. So 51 yards is, is fine as long as the 51 yards count, you know, um, you know, so. Uh, Jimmy Graham being split. I hadn't noticed that he'd been split uh, that that much more than than typically, but that's great. I'm glad to see it. Um, one quick side note: what I loved about the first drive, the very first play on the very first drive of the game, it was the empty backfield, and I believe it was Rawls was split wide, and then he we motioned him back. Russell was in, in the shotgun, and we rustled, um, excuse me, motioned Rawls back to the backfield with with Russell Wilson, and then uh, uh, ran the run. And I loved that. I don't know if you remember that play, but I loved it. It was the very first play of the game. I loved it so much because that was what I've been trying to say for weeks, do stuff like <laughs> that. Because you start them out, spread them out a little bit. They're already looking, okay, zero, you know, they're, they're in a, um, you know, no, uh, um, uh, empty backfield. So they're, they're looking, they're seeing that that's their first, that's their first thought. And then you have a motion and they give them the ball. They, and you got a, a decent run out of that. I was like, that's great. That's perfect. And then, you know, Russell Wilson goofed it later on. But, um, but yeah, no, Jimmy Graham, um, it, Split him out and get as much as you can out of him. Um, 51 yards and a touchdown, I think, is, is, is great production. That, that's fine for me. I don't need Jimmy Graham to get 120 yards receiving. I don't need that from him. I got Doug Baldwin who's getting 9, 10 catches a game. I don't, I don't need Jimmy Graham to get that. I just need Jimmy Graham to, when the ball hits him in his stomach or in his hands <laughs> or in his face, I seem to catch it. That's all I need. That seems do. like most people's uh, complaint about him. I mean, is, uh, and I agree with this. You know, it catch the third downs. Yeah, like if you're gonna drop it, at least don't drop it on the ones that are gonna be huge. Like drop one, yeah. drop a ball that's only gonna that would have only been a two yard gain, or even I'll even take a five yard gain. Drop that one, but don't drop the one where you're so wide open you could have you could have you could have low crawled to the end zone. Yeah. Don't drop the one that where you're already in the end zone. Don't don't I mean just like, don't drop those ones, you know. And and and, and then he goes out though <laughs> after dropping the easiest pass, goes out and makes a catch that no one could make in their dreams. <laughs> so it's right. like it's like yeah no, unbelievable i think it's the consistent consistency thing that a lot of people are upset about and um he doesn't have it and i don't know maybe, maybe we just have to set our expectations lower speaking of lowered expectations our running back situation i've low i've my expectations are so low of this running game right now i mean i i i i'm happy with i I'm happy with just having Russell Wilson run the option every mm -hmm. every time we run, do a read option. I mean, I'm taking a look at Thomas Rawls and Eddie Lacy. Each of them had 11 carries today. We don't. I'm getting the impression we don't know what we're doing. Well, I, I can't disagree with you. Um, I would say the not knowing what we're doing is certainly in just how we are trying to apply the running game to our to our offense. Um, I think it's we're a doing a lot of the same. I understand, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's you know it's we're doing a lot of the same stuff that just we that we know already that doesn't work. Um, and you know, I mean, we had as a team we had a hundred yards rushing today. So you would you might expect there to be somebody who had a great day, but it wasn't. You know, we had less than, or just barely three yards of carry for Rawls and um, and Lacey. Um, you know, and uh, Lockett had, you know, a couple. Um, Russell ran once or twice. McKissick had a couple. Yep. Um, so, um, you know, so I, I, that's, I mean, talk about running back by committee. <laughs> like, that's a pretty, pretty collective effort for just barely 100 yards of rushing so offense. So you take a look at this from a, from a hole, not as a... Uh, yeah, I mean, because obviously that's not going to be us. You know, I mean, I, I think uh, it's it's just simply not going to be us. We're not going to have that uh, that one runner who can pound it, who can, who's going to get – there's no more Marshawn Lynch. It just really isn't. And, and Rawls doesn't quite seem to be the Rawls that we kind of hoped he was in his rookie season, at least not yet. Um, so we have to just make do. What I will say is this. There's been – there was always conversation, you know, year last year, year before – uh, where sooner or later, this is going to have to become Russell Wilson's team. Is Russell Wilson going to be able to take this team on his shoulders and 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 perform and win games on his own without beast mode? You know, I would say, what happens without beast mode? Well, and, yeah. and you look at Russell Wilson, 
27 for 39, 320 yards. We had over 400 yards of offense today, three, t- uh, three TDs, no picks. Russell Wilson is doing his darn job. He's looking a little ugly at times. He has some, some, some faux pas, but Russell Wilson's doing his work. Well, I mean, if we want to place him in that, you know, uh, upon Mount Olympus with the other quarterback gods, I mean, he's getting paid like it. He's getting paid, what, 24, 23 a year? Million. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe we should push him to the forefront and uh, not, not, try to, not try to be beholden to the past. Yeah, right. yeah, interesting. Uh, I did like the. Uh, I did like the. I did like that they gave Tyler Lockett, by the way, three runs. You mentioned that earlier. Uh, it, it's a way to mix things up and keep the other team on their toes. And I, I feel like sometimes we get really predictable. I'm not the only Seahawks fan to ever say that, but um, <laughs> but but it, it's kind of nice to see him on the end of rounds uh, and keep the other defense thinking. Like, what are they going to do? Right. So, uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I would say, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think um, uh, uh, Lockett out of the backfield um, is can can be very dangerous. Um, I think him him and McKissick, both of them have that kind of quick. They have, they have the quickness and the speed. Um, if they you know they turn and take a handoff coming off the end, um, you know they can they can break something. You know if if we if we just figure out how to how to time it right. Um, you know, and if we can get our get our play calling to become just a little bit less predictable when you throw that wrinkle in there, I think that's when it stands to go big. Um, you know, they're 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 making productive plays, but you know, every once in a while, you want to see one go yard on them. You know, yeah. Um, so uh, hopefully, if we can just get our play calling to be a little more inventive, um, those things start to happen. Well, speaking of play calling, uh, there's a particular individual today who wasn't so happy with the particular plays or the efforts on the field, and that's when Doug Baldwin, uh, the cameras caught Doug Baldwin shoving assistant head coach Tom Cable and offensive line coach. Um, Doug Baldwin, he of the nine catches for 92 yards and touchdown, wasn't quite happy with the performance on the field and on the sidelines. What happened? What happened? Well, what I saw, uh, because I saw when they they cut to it, I don't know if this is accurate, but what I what I believe it to be when I saw it was him trying to get in Russell's face. That's what I thought I saw. Um, I thought I saw him, and, and you know, just just doing what what players do. You know, these are the teammates; they all love it. They got nothing but you know brotherly love. But you know, they're out there. They're fierce. They're fighting. Uh, tensions rise. Um, I think he was getting in Russell's face, probably saying just the things that Russell needed to hear. And I, I thought again, this is just what it looked like to me was that. Um, uh, uh, Cable was maybe trying to interject or intervene some way, and Doug Baldwin was saying, "Step off, we're talking." That, that, that's what it looked like to me. That that's what a, I thought. That I is saw. some pretty good insight because here's a quote from Doug Baldwin: "I lost my cool. It's 100 percent my fault," um, said Doug Baldwin. You all know that I love Cable to death. Me and Cable have one of the best relationships, from a coach to a player. So it's 100 percent my fault. I've already apologized to him. I know. I know he knows who I am. It's just at that moment, the players needed to realize it's the players, not the coaches. Huh. That kind of plays exactly into what you, into what you said. So in case you didn't know, um, I'm a genius. So <laughs> just remember that next time you want to ask me a question. <laughs> no, that, that, that's amazing. I, I, I hadn't, I hadn't, even, I did not know that quote even existed. So yeah, no, that's that's cool. <laughs> I feel pretty good about myself right now. But that that's what it looked like to me because I mean, it looked like Cable was coming in from the side, and because you saw him kind of kind of grab Russell on, on the front of his uh, his shoulder pads, you know. So I was like, yeah, I think they're just they're just he's getting frustrated. He's trying to talk to Russell, and Cable's trying to boot, you know put his mouth in there. And I think Bob was just like, oh, get out of here. We're talking. We'll handle it. You know, go back. That's- much of a problem as I have with Tom Cable, I mean, that's kind of what a coach needs to do, right? Deflect the criticism uh, and diffuse the situation. Uh, then again, Tom Cable's also the guy that punched out his uh, – didn't he punch out <laughs> like a defensive coordinator or offensive Yeah, he punched out somebody yeah, on the – one of some assistant back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. You know, I, I think you're right. Uh, you know, coaches, that's their job. Yeah, they, they shouldn't – allow you know th- insidious things to happen they shouldn't allow the, the the sideline to fall apart um those type of internal conflicts need to be mitigated um but i believe that on this team there's a certain 
there's a certain uh, synergy between the players where it doesn't really get like that. I think I think any of those types of com- uh, co- conversations, if you want to call it that, arguments, whatever, are going to be ultimately productive, ultimately positive. When Richard Sherman lost his mind, I think it's going to be ultimately productive. I don't see a problem with it. Again, there is a fine line between between you know good and bad, I guess, when it comes to those type of outbursts. Um, but I, I just just based on what I know of Doug Baldwin, what I hear him talk on his on his pressers, you know, and things like that, you know, it, it even you listen to Pete Carroll when he talks about how he wants his players, you know, to express themselves and and, and things like that. So I I see it as until I see otherwise, um, where where it becomes something that that's that's a cancer. Um, I don't see a problem with it, you know. But obviously, if it is a problem, then yeah, coaches need to step in. Yeah. So uh, to further that quote that I read or read earlier, um, he was asked what what he said, and he said, "I can't repeat those things here." The basic sentiment is, uh, "What are we doing? We have all the talent in the world. We have everything we need right here. It's not the play calling. It's not the X's on and the O's. It's not the other team. It's us. All we need to do is settle down and play our game." Um, I get that, and that's a very calm, cool, and collected way to phrase your concerns. Uh, but that's in post game. I mean, right there at the moment, it was. Was do you think he might have thrown down with Russell Wilson? I mean, we saw that Baldwin and Percy Harvin got into it right um, back before the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, was that something that he was going to go shake Russell Wilson up and? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I I'm, maybe that's well. <laughs> I think I think didn't jump in for no reason. Well, I, I think um, number one. Well, I, I see. Which one do I say number one? Because I got <laughs> two points to make. <laughs> I don't know which one A and one B. One A. Uh, Percy Harvin is a whole another type of hothead himself. <laughs> okay, so so when you when you, so, you know sometimes fighting fire with fire is going to just is just going to make a wildfire, right? Um, you know, uh, Percy Harvin may not take too kindly to have somebody jump in his face. Um, you know, even if it is meant to be positive, um, and it seems to be quite obvious now in hindsight that Percy Harvin's attitude doesn't work too well in most locker rooms or sidelines, for that matter. Um, so when you have someone who just really isn't there mentally, um, you know, when you don't have that camaraderie, when you don't have, when you have brothers, brothers can talk to each other like that, and it comes out positive. When you have general acquaintances, just somebody you know talk to you like that, it turns into a fight. So um, I think it's a little bit different. That same exact situation, if there was talking to Percy Harvin, might ended up being a brawl on our own sideline during the game. They would have been on, you know, TV for the next two, three weeks. Um, but uh, it being to Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson's more calm, collected. He, you know, these guys have been together their whole careers. You know, um, he, he wasn't just patch made work. Well, what do you think? Okay, so I, <laughs> this team allows for that, and uh, we saw it in the preseason where Frank Clark punched out Jermaine Fetty. And almost kept a Fetty from being able to play the regular season. When, like, I say, when's too far? Too far. I mean, obviously that was way too far. I mean, sure. Uh, but I mean, it, they like to ride the Seahawks being they. They like to ride on the edge, <laughs> and um, it, what is going to become of this Baldwin situation? I mean, is that uh, he, is that him getting away with something? And this is going to pop back up next week or the week after or in an important game? I, I don't know. It's, it, it's, I know you're saying, like, uh, calm down. It's, it's brothers being brothers, uh, you know, boys being boys. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't think so. I, because I look, at, I look at Doug Baldwin in the, 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 the totality of Doug Baldwin. Outside of him just being fierce on the field, uh, a guy who gives 100, 110% on every single down, and who doesn't like to see his players play less than what they're capable of. Outside of those things, what can you really say bad about Doug Baldwin? I say, I say Doug Baldwin is, is a stand-up dude. Now, do you get hyped on the field? Absolutely. Uh, do I see this being a potential for, you know, worse things down the road? I don't see any being any worse than what you just saw today. Now, media, and I guess... I guess yeah, that that's counts us. as that counts us. <laughs> that's 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 us. <laughs> um, are gonna blow this? Are gonna probably blow this up to something bigger than it really needs to be? 
uh, especially you know the you know the big networks are going to talk about it. Is Doug, what's wrong with Doug Baldwin? Is, you know, what, you know, is, is there is Doug Baldwin have a problem with Russell Wilson? You know, what did he do to him? Would you know who is he? Was he looking at Sierra wrong? Who knows? Who knows <laughs> what they're going to say? You know, that's cool. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, so uh, they say a little on the crazy stuff. So, but no, I see it as a non-issue um, until until that changes. I don't see it as an issue at all. Okay. Well, we'll put a lid on that and see if it boils over next week. And I spoke of Golden Tate. And speaking of Golden Tate, there is a touchdown today that kind of reminded us of the fail Mary that came oh, against man. the Packers, <laughs> where Golden Tate and uh, Packers defender simultaneously had possession. And I, I found the rule uh, when Richard. When uh, Richardson went up, caught the ball simultaneously with the defending Giants player, Rule 8, Section 3, Article 1, Item 5, a simultaneous catch. If a pass is caught simultaneously by two eligible opponents and both players retain it, the ball belongs to the passing team. Right. It is not a simultaneous catch if the player gains control first and the opponent subsequently gains co joint control. So that means if Richardson caught the ball first, which he did, and then the opposing team grab it and then it becomes simultaneous, it's instantly a catch. Okay? Uh, if the ball is muffed after simultaneously touching, uh, after simultaneous uh, touch by two such players, all the player, all of the players of the passing team become able to... Okay, that's not related to this rule. Sorry. Um, but there, there's two there's two things here. There's simultaneous catch. Both have possessions at the same time. Boom. That goes to the passing team. Awarded. If the receiver catches the ball first and the opponent tries to tear it away, but it's still simultaneous, it's still retained by the passing team. The only way you can do that is if you rip the ball away and then that's a fumble. Right, that'd be a fumble. You know, my only issue with the whole tie goes to the offense thing, you know, and the fail Mary um, was was this. So there's a whole, there's been conversation about what is a catch many, many, many times over the last couple of years, right? What is a catch? I don't hey, know. what's a catch? I don't know who anymore. Knows? <laughs> yeah, of course not. No one knows what a catch is. No, not even the people who say what catches are know what catches are. So, so... I mean, if you threw the ball to a player who was all by himself and he jumped into the air and caught the ball in his hands, they wouldn't call it a catch until he came down and touched his feet <laughs> inbound. Right. That would, they wouldn't call that a catch. However, no, we saw, we if saw we go that, back... Sorry to interrupt we, you. We saw, that, we saw that in game one where Amara Darbo caught the ball and he was carried five yards out of bounds and dumped. And they call right. it no catch. Right, which is a fairly new rule because it used to be, they used to call it force out. They would actually give the player a catch. That changed you know, I'm, I'm half a, dec a decade ago or so, maybe a little less. But, um, but uh, if we go back to the Green Bay game, the, fail, the original fail Mary, they said that, was it, who was it? Was it, um, who was the defender? Um, Shields? Or was it uh, TJ? No, was it Shields? We pushed Shields down. We take push Shields down. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, the other guy. Um, okay. Uh, anyway, go uh, on. Go on. What yeah, he, he jumped up and got both of his hands on the ball first. Tate went up with him, got one hand on the ball. But I'm thinking by the time that the defender got his both feet on the ground, both him and Tate both had both hands on the ball. So why is when a player all by himself it's not a catch until he actually retains possession and touches down on the field. Otherwise, they wouldn't call it a catch. But this defender, there are people, they're, they're, the, the league already came back and said they made a mistake about the Phil Mary. They said they made a mistake. They admitted that. Yeah. But the defender did not have full possession of the football with his feet down in bounds on that play. Yet they still say that that should have been an interception. So it, it's, it's inconsistent to me. It's I, I, don't, I don't understand. It's very inconsistent. There was one where uh, Megatron caught one uh in the end zone everybody thought it was a touchdown but they ruled it as him not having maintained possession inbounds and making one football move 
I remember that play because he caught the ball and went to the ground and I'd already established the catch. So he turned over to put the football down and they called it an incomplete pass because per their rule, for their perception, he didn't complete it, complete the complete catch action. There's another one. There's another one a couple of years ago where Des Bryant uh, caught, well, didn't catch the ball. They ruled it incomplete, but he took three steps. How many football moves do you need? (laughs) Whatever football move is. Yeah. On, on that one, I kind of feel a little bit differently about only because, um, you know, they say if you're going to the ground, um, you know, because I mean, just ex- accepting the rule for what it is, Des Bryant was going to the ground whether the defender was there or not. That, that, he was already leaning his body in a fashion that was going to take him to the ground. So in that respect, the ball did come loose. And it came loose very early in the process of the catch. Um, and it did touch the ground and all, and all that kind of stuff. So that one I wasn't too upset about. But maybe I'm just being a hypocrite. Who knows? Uh, well, for me, uh, for me, it happened to the Cowboys, and I'm okay with it. Uh, but... Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but exactly. it definitely it definitely let me know that I don't know what a catch is. So. Yeah. <laughs> and neither does any. I, we just got to hope that, that that rule doesn't come back to bite our team in the butt. I'm hoping for that as well. Um, I don't want – there's another thing I don't want biting us on the butt, and that's the – Los Angeles Rams. The Rams today just oh. obliterated the Cardinals back there in Whoa. jolly old England. What was it, 33 Whoa. to nothing or something ridiculous? Um, Cardinals have no running game. Uh, now they don't even have a quarterback because Carson Palmer's got a broken arm. Uh, with our last couple of minutes here, I just want a quick I got a quick question for you. How afraid of you? How afraid of the Rams are you? And how unafraid of the Cardinals are you? Like, if I were to give you uh, a one to ten me, a one to ten meter of like one not afraid, ten scared. What do you think of the Rams? Uh, well, Rams. Um, excuse me, uh, Rams. Well, let me start with the Cardinals. Cardinal. You know what? I don't know. To be honest, I, I really, I really can't even call it because. First of all, I'm I'm glad I didn't I didn't tweet this or post this on social media because I would have I would have had to put my foot in my mouth right now about it. <laughs> um, I said I was I was in my brain I was saying and I almost tweeted it out like watch out the Cardinals are back because Adrian Peterson came out and ran rough sod over um, who they played last week. Um, uh, I can't call it can't remember right now, but uh, Adrian Peterson came back and was looking like Adrian Peterson all over again. I'm like, okay, the Cardinals just got relevant again, um, and then today. It was nothing, and then Palmer broke his arm. You know, so I mean, they they're they're probably going to tank now. I have to imagine. So yeah, no 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 fear of the Cardinals. The Rams, uh, you know, we've already beat them, so it's tough to say that you can't, you're going to be too afraid of them. You have to recognize them as formidable. But the next time we see them is going to be at the clink. So you know, uh, as long as they don't return the favor to us, you know, it's beating us at home. Um, I think we'll be all right. Uh, the games are going to be tight. The games are going to be tough. But I think we'll go ahead and take care of the Rams uh, after what we saw, um, you know, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, on that same on that scale, on the same uh, as you. That uh, I, I never want to call. I never want to count a conference opponent out. 49ers right. gave us a run. Uh, the Cardinals are going to try to make. I don't think they're making the playoffs. So they're going to make their season trying to annoy the hell out of us and playing sure. this stuff and probably doing as many cheap shots as possible the right, rams right. i just see them projecting on this arc i don't see them scared of us they're just projecting on this arc of uh of great and not greatness we don't know about that yet but um, very goodness very goodness yes yeah. i like that term um and so i i don't know i'm getting a little bit scared uh but you gotta as rick player would say you gotta to be the man you gotta beat the man and they haven't beat us yet they didn't beat us yet. I, I think what we might have to deal with with the Rams more than them beating us is just who's going to have the better record come week 17. You know, when it comes time for, for, for seeding and, you know, or if, you know, who, depending on how the rest of the season goes, who's going to make it into the dance and who's not. Um, sure. the, the head-to-head may not actually be all that important. You know, obviously it is um, for the obvious reasons. But, who, you know, when it comes down to the you know, last couple weeks of the season, are we going to get in over them? Are we going to have the, uh, the, the home field advantage over them, you know? Right. Um, that that's where we really might come down to being more important there. All right, great. We got a couple minutes left here. I want to talk about next week's opponent, those Houston Texans. They come up to Seattle, uh, hopefully to play in the mud and the slop. Well, not mud, but the field turf and the rain um, <laughs> and the cold. Uh, and maybe those warm weather 
warm weather dome playing Texans might be in for more that they can handle. I mean, uh, take a look at Deshaun Watson. He has 15 touchdowns and over 1,500 yards. Uh, but he threw up a stinker against Cincinnati last week. And um, has has this kid from Clemson played in the cold and the, and the wind? Be curious. I have to imagine he has played in the, some, some cold weather games. But, um, I mean, look at Houston. Uh, I mean, look at Deshaun Watson. He's got... Better stats than Russell Wilson right now. Um, I mean, uh, you know, so he's he's out there playing good football. Um, their their team ultimately, I don't believe, is really that good. But I thought the same thing about the Tennessee Titans when they when we went up against them, and you know, we we got we got cut cut up really good by them. Um, I don't want to say this could be a trap game, but this is a game. Like I said, um, you know, coming into today's game. We need to go ahead and score early. That's a Seahawks' r- real goal, I believe. With what we need to start figuring out how to do is scoring early. Um, games like Houston, I believe this, this really, uh, we run the risk of it coming down to a late drive, going either direction. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was going to be that same thing, same thing today. But um, I think it runs, that, that will be the, the narrative for Seattle moving forward, regardless of who they're playing. If we don't get on the board early, then we, we, run, we run the risk of playing the same old defense keeping us in the game till the end, and it's going to come down to a late drive, either the defense saving the game for us or Russell having to go win it for us. Um, and it will be nice to just, you know, just go into victory formation for a few weeks that in a row. That would be really you know? nice, yes. Um, <laughs> I want to get back to Deshaun Watson for a second, last week's uh, play against Cincinnati. Um, I wonder if maybe there's a book on him now. Now that teams have seen him for a little bit, uh, you know, I don't think Chris Richard's going to do anything, the defensive coordinator for the Seahawks. I don't think he's going to do anything out of the ordinary, but I'm curious how Watson plays against this number one scoring defense in the NFL. Uh, you know, has he seen anything like this? Yeah, I don't know if he's seen anything like the Legion of Boom. Um, mobile guy, uh, I think he's probably going to tend to want to pull it down um and we handle that quite well um not a lot of mobile quarterbacks do well with their feet against us except for like the type of mobile quarterback like aaron Rodgers, because he's such a threat throwing the ball that you have to respect it yeah. and then when your safeties and your and your linebackers are 15 20 yards down the field he can just take off and run he can run pretty good you know um but a quarterback like like uh colin kaepernick and the and the um uh, Cam Newton's, you know, they, I've they've never, never really yeah. dashed us too bad uh, on, with, with their feet. So I would imagine him, you know, being a young, uh, young uh, quarterback um, may make some snap decisions that might come back and bite him. I think we'll handle him, uh, um, you know, pretty well. Great. Thank you, Robert. Um, so we are the Seattle Sports Union. My name is Abraham Deweese. And with me is Robert English, my NFL analyst for Seattle Sports Union. Uh, you have a podcast weekly that you do. Would you care to uh, care to broadcast to our fans out there your your podcast name and your Twitter <laughs> handle? Yep. If you if you can find the videos, <laughs> which will be fixed this week, <laughs> which will be fixed this week. Yeah. No. Uh, go to YouTube. Uh, search Rob English Seahawks. You'll find me. I'm the. I'll be the very first uh, result there. Uh, catch my podcast. Um, short yardage. I do a recap of uh, of the previous game and a uh, you know in a, a summary of the game coming up, um, and it's also posted on the Seattle Sports Union website as well. So uh, you know, like, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned. And your Twitter hand, your Twitter handle, Twitter at Rob English thirteen. And my Twitter handle is pretty easy. It's Abraham Deweese, and we are the Seattle Sports Union. Check out our great articles on SeattleSportsUnion.com. Also, check out our team Twitter handle that is Seattle Sports U. And uh, also like us on Facebook. We will see you guys next week after the Houston game at 8 o'clock Pacific next Sunday. Have a great night, guys. Go Hawks.